Okay, well, welcome everyone to the eighth user forum. We're delighted that, that you could join us today. We've got lots to pack into this session. I'm delighted to welcome presenters from OKEA and also Harbour Energy. We'll take us through some use cases. I'm going to kick off with an introduction to the new features that we've just released. If you have any questions during the webinar, please just write them down in the chat or feel free to contact us later. We also have a couple of polls through the session to get your feedback on things. So just if anyone was there during the start and could hear that uh, tune, there's a, a link to what I'm about to talk to in the introduction and new features. Because for those of you that don't know, we're talking about Ingenuity 7 in this user forum. Ingenuity 7 is the latest version of our platform. The current version that's live with many of you is Ingenuity 6. That is the Confluence-based version. So what's Ingenuity 7? Well, it's like Ingenuity 6, but this one goes up to 11. So that quote is thanks to Spinal Tap. If anyone's seen the film, they have the amplifiers that just have that bit extra. And so that's really, for us, Ingenuity 7 is like Ingenuity 6, but it has, has the same functionality as before, but it's more intuitive, it's faster, and we're adding new features as well. So let's look at some of the features that we we've added recently since the last user forum. We're going to look at alerts. We've got tag aliases back, and we've also got the event track is back. Plus, we have a number of completely new functions that we're delighted to be able to add, including an asset model browser, a data source view, new functions in the calculation historian, data-driven dashboards, plus a plug-in architecture that we're really excited about. And finally, we've got a pre-trained pre-trained GPT, and you'll see that as the last session in this user forum, because Sitsi's going to show us something of that. So we are aiming to be feature complete in 20, Q4 2024, and then we embark on kind of next round of improvements and upgrades and new features for 2025. So right now in development, we have batch trending and a map component, plus we're doing ongoing performance improvements. But we're also interested in your feedback from this session, if there's anything you think we've missed or we should prioritize. OK, so taking you through the new functionality, the first thing to look at is alerts. So we've uh, alerts was there in Ingenuity 6. It's still there under the hood in 7, but we've been missing the user interface because we wanted to redo it. So we've now got that, and I'll show you briefly what it looks like. So now, before, you might remember that alerts was very text-based and you had to type in the, the calculation or the tag that you wanted. Now, it's all done with a drag and drop. So there's an alerts icon in the left-hand menu. If you click on that, you'll see the index of all your alerts. And alerts will come up if you search for things in general. If you want to edit an alert or add one, you'd click Add Alert. Everything is drag and drop. So you now, just like the calculation builder, you drag a tag in, you can drag a check in, and then you link them together. So for speed, here's one I made earlier. And you can see this tag, th this will read a tag, and it triggers when it goes above 2,200, but it won't reset until it goes below 2,100. So that's the functionality to stop it chattering. And then we've got the option to add notifications like an email recipient and actions. We've changed the architecture for this because we want to be able to expand the number of data sources you can create alerts on, the types of checks you can do, and the actions you can take. So we've re-architected re it and we've rebuilt it. So this, the exact functionality you had in 6 is now going to be available in 7, and we're going to be adding new features to it all the time. OK, next thing, tag aliases. So this is super useful. This is like creating an alias or a bookmark for tag. It lets you alias complex calculations so people can find them very quickly. On the right-hand side here, you see how it looks in the existing Ingenuity. Again, it's like the alerts. It's very text-based. Now we've got a new user interface. It's more intuitive, and it's much faster to use. So what does that look like? On the left-hand side, again, new menu item with tag aliases, and you'll see them all listed. You can add a new alias, and you, you could either drag it in from the basket, or you could search for a tag or build a calculation, and then give it a name. And then here's an example of one that we've made before. 
we in this very simple we're just aliasing a level transmitter but when you trend it then you'll see the alias name this these tag aliases are stored in the db aliases data source so if i was to go to a trend and search all search the, the aliases as soon as you've added one it will be available in search and everywhere else and you'll be able to search for it just like anything else okay another new feature the event track is back and now it's even better so those of you that have the event track will know its functionality this lets you add events to a timeline and when you hover over them you can see the information that's contained in them let's have a look at what that looks like so here's an example of now it's actually a data driven dashboard and I'm going to come back to these for the purpose of this I'm just going to look at the event track component so this is the event track here and you can see as we scroll along it changes the it, it keeps in sync with the trend but it shows you relevant events and these events have been filtered based on a selector up here how do you add it well it's the same way as any other component now is you just drag and drop it from the sideline and you put it on the dashboard and then you can select where the data comes from. So here we happen to have it coming from a data source that's providing us information for these gradient traverse plots. Uh, one useful feature is that you can create a sync so you can synchronize it to another component on the screen and that's what makes it possible to uh, to keep the, the time scooter in line. Okay, the asset model. So this is now new functionality. So previously, if you had a knowledge graph as part of your instance, you would need to use the Neo4j browser to find information in it. So it's quite hard really to find what was there and how it was related. What we've done now is made a simple view and we've called this the asset model browser, but it lets you navigate the model. You start at one object and then you walk it as if it was a hierarchy. So let's look at what that is like. So here we've got an example. Uh, we've got a node at the top and then we can just keep expanding it and it shows us what's connected under it. So this company has these assets and underneath these assets, you have stations. Underneath the stations, there's wells. Uh, and then we could look at say an individual well. When we go into a well, we can see information about it. And if it's got any sensors or tags related to it, you can expand them, it shows you the properties. You can click on one, it will show you the sensor and then you can click on it to trend it. So it allows you to go to navigate it much like a hierarchy you'll have seen in other applications. Previously, or if you click the knowledge graph button in the left-hand side, it will still bring up the Neo4j browser. So this is the actual structure that we've just looked at. We have a company with assets and this is how you'd have done it before you'd have just expanded these and you could have seen the stations. So this is really a, a more intuitive and an easier way to navigate your models and it's searchable. So we could actually start at a different object. Uh, there isn't one called that, it's station. So we could start at a different object instead and then we could navigate the model from that point. Okay, data sources. So we've always had data sources connected to Ingenuity, but one of the challenges has been for people to understand, well, what is available? So we wanted to come up with a way where people could instantly see everything that was connected and then find out what was available inside each of those connections. So that's now available on the data sources on uh, icon on the left-hand side. If you click that, it will list all the data sources connected you'll see a short description and what they're compatible with, whether it provides a value, multi-value, or a chart information or a table. If you then click the details by one of them, it brings up information about that data source, where it's coming from, descriptions of parameters, and you can also test the data that you get back from it. So in this case, we've got a third party API and we can just quickly run a test and see what sort of stuff we're getting back. Uh, there's another interesting one down here, say the, the Met Office, the, the weather forecast, 
Uh, this one has parameters where you can put in your location and you'll get back rainfall and things. So we can test that and we just see the return set that we get. So making it much easier for people to find information. And then when you're adding information to say a dashboard, the this is the exact list that you will see, but obviously it will be filtered. So if I was to add a chart here and I try and add data to the chart, it will only show me the sources that can be trended. Okay, functions and calculations for dates. Uh, so recently we've had a number of use cases that have required us to do maths on the dates behind a value rather than the value itself. Previously, you could always show the date of something in a dashboard, but it was not possible to use it in a calculation. Now with the relate, latest release of the calculation historian, we've got new features that allow us to return the date value of the tag so we can now do maths on it. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So previously on a dashboard, you could have shown the value or if you select the timestamp instead, you could return the date of that value. But now using the calculation epoch milliseconds, you can return that value as a number being the epoch milliseconds. So in this example here, we've taken this value from the sensor, but we're, we're returning the epoch milliseconds. That gives us this large number, but we can, we can use the date component. So if I show the dashboard here, this particular component is a number. So that's just showing you the epoch milliseconds. But this component is a date component. It's got the same source, it's got this calculation, and it's returning the epoch milliseconds of the underlying tag. But now we can tell it to format it uh, as a date, and it will return uh, a human readable date. Or we could use that value in a calculation to do something like, tell me the hours since this has last changed. So that's a value, an example that we've got here. I could do uh, a simple subtraction. Um, I, could I could use the value from that calculation and subtract it from the current ecopoc milliseconds. Uh, and then I could divide that by 3,600 times 1,000 because it's milliseconds. So that brings me on to another point. We've also got a new historian called dates. And you can use this to return information about either the current date or the time that is being used in the calculation. So if you type dates slash current epoch millisecond, it will give you the value now. And you can see that that is now. Then we've got some Booleans. So we can have an argument, is that today? because sometimes you want to just show something for the last day, or we've got the opposite, is it before today? And we can also return the days in the month. Uh, so you can do certain things where, where you need to know how many days there are in the month. So that's super useful, really happy to have that as part of the product. Okay, next thing, data-driven dashboard. So this is really quite a major new feature. If you have Ingenuity 6, you will know this as dynamic dashboard. This is where we can make dashboards where the content changes based on what you've selected. The challenge with how this was done in Ingenuity 6 is it was really done in the back end and all the content was returned in an API. So it was, wasn't really user configurable. If you didn't like the color of a trend, you couldn't change it. You'd have to ask us to do it. So now in Ingenuity 7, this is fully user configurable. So let's have a look now how that works. So this is the same gradient traverse plot that we saw previously. If we go in and edit the page, you'll see that all these components now are just added. But this works together with something we showed at the previous user forum, which was variables. So now we can declare variables on the page. We can say, where do they come from? Are they selectable? Do they come from the output of a data source? And then we can use those variables as the input to other components. We could probably do a whole session on this alone, but I'll just briefly uh, give you an example then of, of how this works. So here we've got the ability to select a well, and then we can select some dates. The outputs of these then get used to filter the data in this chart, this event track, 
and this table. So th this is a fairly simple thing. You've got a chart and you have some comments from a log. So whatever well we pick, it will then refresh the data, return from the tags from the well model, because we have the knowledge graph with the wells linked. And then we filtered the, the comments log to see the relevant comments for that. Again, this is all configurable. So if we didn't like the fact that this chart was green, then we could go in and change that straight away. So I could change it to be pink. And now if I save that, that dashboard, that will be it saved. You don't have to come back to us for us to change the code. It's really straightforward. If we want to add other components onto the page, really simple now, we just drag them and drop them. <clears throat> so it also means we've got much more variety in the kinds of layouts we can do with these dashboards as well. <clears throat> okay, final two things. Next thing is plugin architecture. So under the hood, we've made some significant changes in Ingenuity 7 to make it easier to expand it with one-off apps or plugins, as we call them. It means that these plugins can leverage the power in the Ingenuity platform, such as data sources, um, authentication, color schemes, branding. So it means it's much, much faster to develop new features or replace legacy apps because we don't have to rewrite any of the framework. We can use what's there and just fo <clears throat> focus on the business logic. A plugin appears exactly like an app in the left-hand panel. So it looks seamlessly integrated. It makes it easy for users then to find custom tools. In order to do it, you just have to declare a manifest, which is like a contract that declares what this plugin provides and how it's going to integrate with Ingenuity. It, it can be as simple as making a script in Node Red to make a plugin. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. And the example you'll see later, which is the shift log for OKEA, is in fact a plugin as well. So let's quickly look at the plugin we made using Node Red. So this plugin, it simply uploads a file. It's actually a forecast, and then it, it gets processed and written to the Influx historian. This is the plugin. That is all it is. It's uh, a few scripts, or a few functions in Node-RED strung together to declare an API, um, use some of the standard features in Node-RED, and then it's declared as a manifest, and it appears in Ingenuity. So it was super simple to build this. And I think Andrew, who's presenting later, did it in five minutes, he'd probably say. Maybe it was 20, but it was a very, very quick plugin to add. Obviously, they could be much more complex, and the logbook certainly isn't five minutes. But it, the, the point is to show that you now have an option to go from a very simple plugin to a complex thing, but each option is much quicker and cheaper <clears throat> than the previous option of making a standalone application. Okay, and finally, then the last thing uh, to say is that we have a pre-trained GPT now that's being integrated. This is going to be the last uh, user session. SITS is going to demonstrate that. So I'm not going to talk about it here. We'll look at it at the end of the session. So I realize there's a lot to cover there, uh, and you've probably got loads of questions. So please do write them in the chat, and we will come to those at the end. <clears throat>